Trivia question. Have I reviewed the Savage 93 series of rim fire rifles already? Longtime time TMPers may remember the answer, and it is... Yes, I have. In 2010, the FVSR model suppressed. Cool little rifle. I said a lot of good things, a few bad things, as I recall, about the FVSR. And I said in that tabletop review, we didn't have the bunker back then, that it would function for the entire lineup. Here we are, a decade removed, over a decade, 12 years, and I'm going to do an update review on the Savage 93. But, a couple changes, not in 22 long rifle. 22 Magnum and first time ever in the Nut and Fancy Project, 17 HMR. Are you stoked? Are you stoked? 17 HMR. I have two rifles to show you. One, I have been holding out on you for this entire time in TMP. It's my gun. Here's a quick glimpse. We'll look at it later. I've had it the entire time here in the project. I've just been waiting to review it. Now's the time. And then I have one on loan from Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store. Information below. Give them support. This minimalist model, and they were the foundation for all the data that I'm going to integrate into this bunk review on the Savage 93 in 22 Magnum, this one by the way, and then my gun in 17 HMR. Let me give you a heads up. I'm going to say some negative things, even about my gun. So there you go. It's going to be an honest review as always. That's why guys keep coming back to me. Not bought and paid for by anyone. Be a donor. They are the reason I work so hard and make GRVs to this day. Links below. Thank you very much. I really liked the looks of this gun sitting on the shelf. The minimalist. Brown camo. Laminated. Not camo, but laminated wood stock. Good looking. Different, right? Cut out back here. We'll look at it again. And uh, super short overall length. Threaded muzzle, half inch by 28. You know, sporter contour barrel. Uh, I liked it. I was like, that's interesting. As White and I walked the, the store late at night after it closed. I was like, Man, that's cool. Maybe I could revisit that and talk about an interesting philosophy of use that I've never told you guys. But I needed a non-22 long rifle gun to do it. So this one I got in 22 mag. Again, mine's a 17 HMR. I'll speak briefly about those calibers during the review. I'm going to jump right into philosophy of use, by the way, because this is interesting. And this is another reason I'm doing this update review. You guys will say, um, wow, 17 HMR uh, and 22 mag. I didn't know you're a hunter, a, you know, a varmint hunter. I, I am really not a hunter. If, if I come across a place that is infested with something like prairie dogs, ground squirrels, there's a ton of them and they need to be cold. I have no problem shooting some of them. No problem. Anytime there's an overage of some type of animal that doesn't have natural predators, uh, I don't know, keeping the population in check, I'll go harvest some with whatever gun. So the first philosophy of use is obviously a predator gun, especially for me in 17 HMR. Uh, I really like 17 HMR. I haven't talked about it too much. I've just mentioned it on the sly in some uh, GRVs. But here, I'll tell you right out, I, I love 17 HMR for that philosophy of use, first and foremost. We'll call it uh, predator hunting or varmint hunting. Now, if you look on the buttstock of my, and this is model number, uh, it's a 93R17. And now they are calling it uh, 93R17 BVSS. So it is still being produced. It's a 21 inch heavy barrel stainless steel 17 HMR Savage 93. But look at my ballistic tables. I have to turn them upside down so you can see this side. So th that wasn't for show, that was for go. So we would go out to Wyoming long before TMP, by the way. This is before TMP. I've owned this gun before TMP. And we would search out predators and we were sent to some fields and we had varying levels of success. But that's what that was for. So I had my come ups there and I show you the load. I think it was a CCI load, maybe 20 grain. I can't read with these ridiculous glasses on. And uh, yeah, we'd go hunting. So my friends and I would go out and it was great fun. That's first philosophy of use, uh, doing the environment a favor, calling down uh, 
varmints and also having fun and making memories with your friends and not going broke. I mean, you can shoot a centerfire caliber, right? 22, 250, 223, something even more powerful and have a blast literally and just completely <laughs> liquefy those ground squirrels. And I have friends who do it. But I think it's more of a challenge and it's funner to do it in 17 HMR, which generally speaking in a 17 grain load is 2650 feet per second, 245 foot pounds. A 20 grain load is 2350, 250 foot pounds. Um, it's just basically a neck down 22 mag. I found between the two cartridges, 22 mag is excellent, but it definitely is not as flat shooting as a 17 HMR. And if I range out beyond 100 yards, I'd much rather go with a 17 HMR. It bucks the wind better. It has fewer come-ups, as you saw on my table there. I just like it for predators. And it's it's not a, a super powerful cartridge. It's, it's a rimfire, right? It's just basically a neck down 22 mag, like we said. I know a lot of you guys have experience with it. You probably share my enthusiasm for it. I, I to this day, think it's a great cartridge. I, to this day, think there should be semi-automatic bug-out kit uh, carbines chambered for it that are super lightweight, maybe two, 2.5, 3.5 pounds with a 30 round magazine, if they can get them to work reliably. 17 HMR is an interesting cat. And so is 22 mag. I've talked about this before. It's hard to get semi-auto rifles working in those calibers. Um, you know, with the, uh, well, the brass, the way it is. Uh, so maybe the market comes out with that, but I think they've had a lot of failures in that. Uh, go watch, by the way, my Savage A17, A22 review, and I posted that in uh, May of 2020. We'll talk about that there more, and I did get one in seven, uh, 22 mag, as I recall, and I did have problems with it. Speak of the devil. So getting back to this gun, though, bolt-action rifle, you don't have to worry about reliability problems, or do you? Huh. Uh, foretelling what's coming in this review. Um, it's it's a great and fun hunting rifle in that application. Also rabbits, small game. Uh, heck, you could take like game birds with it if it's legal in your jurisdiction. Some I think in some places it's not, but it's so accurate. Uh, at least it uh, you know promises such accuracy that you can get a headshot at like a on a grouse at a hundred yards if you have really good stability. I'm going to leave that POU. Here's another one. And this is the one I, I've been waiting forever to tell you about. And it's kind of fun. And it's going to be called the Mini Sniper Philosophy of Use. Mini Sniper. No, it's not what you think. It's not something related to without rule of law or self-defense. No, it's purely recreational. It's a game that before TMP I used to play all the time. I don't play it now because I'm so maxed out in content production. But here it goes something like this. You get a 2 by 4 you cut it into chunks that are about four to five inches long. You spray paint those chunks with fluorescent orange paint, something you can see easily. You'll have shooting teams, preferably two on two shooting teams. You'll have a spotter and a shooter. They turn their back and the other shooting team places the blocks at random uh, distances. I would say I wouldn't probably go beyond 100 yards for this exercise because you want to hit kind of quick. But I'll place like a block at 50, a block at 75, two blocks at 100, kind of in a, a 200 or 180 degree periphery. You blow a whistle, the shooting team comes up, they drop to prone, and the spotter helps mark the targets, and you time each other to see how quickly you can engage five targets with your 17 HMR. Not fancy, that sounds so freaking fun. It is freaking fun. Way fun. And you don't need steel targets. All you need is a good backdrop. I find... A 22 Magnum is perfect for it. A 17 HMR I like even better because I don't have to do any hold ups at all. I can just aim right on at 100 yards with that uh, size of target. Now, I did this probably five times with my friends. Uh, it's called the Mini Sniper game, and it was just super fun. And also, you're practicing the marksmanship fundamentals, communication skills. You can have your own language, and that can translate to a center fire platform, but you're not going broke doing it. And this style of gun, specifically a Model 93 and a 22 Mag or 17 HMR is perfect for many sniper comp competitions, a la nothing fancy style. Now, why not 22 long rifle? Could I do it with a 22 long rifle? Absolutely, you could. Uh, it's just funner because when you hit the blocks of wood, they, they really zing. 
you know, when they, when they connect and you can mark hits better and it's just funner. And you can't, I said a hundred yards, you could go beyond that. What we found though, is if you put blocks beyond a hundred yards, even if they're fluorescent orange, sometimes it takes them a while to the team to find it. And you don't want to have any obstacles in front of it. So the, the spotter will have binoculars. He'll call, Hey, I've got one at two 30. I've got one at 12 o'clock. I've got another one at 11 o'clock and the shooter will engage and you can establish your own language of how, how you do that. And sometimes we limit the amount of round shots. So if you missed, you, you just lose points and the winner, you know, has to connect again. Speed is paramount. Fun drill, fun drill. It's called mini sniper competition. That's a, a primary philosophy of use for these guns. How about bug out kit? We talked about how short overall length this is, right? It's five pounds, five ounces without optics with one 10 round steel magazine in it. I want to talk a lot about those. Uh, I would say no, not just no, but hell no. It's way too heavy. It's a bolt action rifle. Um, if I'm going to put a bolt action rifle in a bug out kit, it's probably not going to be a repeating rifle. It's going to be a single shot, like a chipmunk or a savage rascal. Go watch my review on the savage rascal. I talk about that because they're super lightweight. They're very accurate. And in that application, all you're really doing is firing one shot to kill a rabbit so you can eat. This is just too heavy for a bug out kit. Recreational, um, it's clown world right now. And the reason I'm hesitant to recommend it recreationally is because ammo is hard to come by. 22 Magnum is hard to find, 17 HMR is hard to find. Maybe in your neck of woods or your sources, not so much. Uh, I would probably stick to, stick to 22 Long Rifle for that. End of philosophy of use. And we go to features. Hey, none fans, you're kind of cruising in this review. Well, there's a lot to say. And I have some negative stuff, like I said, that I got to get to. We'll leave time for that. Okay. Again, good looking rifle. The Savage 93, available in 22 Long Rifle, 17 HMR, and of course, 22 Mag. I don't know if they have a 17 Hornady Mach 2. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of that cartridge. It's a neck down 22 Long Rifle. I. I'm not doing that. If I'm going to spend that amount of money, I'm not just going to go for a 17 HMR. I, I, I don't have any guns and never will have a gun chambered for Mach 2. There's my two cents on that. Probably that's all it's worth too. Different varieties of the 93 in these chambers I've been talking about. You've got the 93 FVSS XP and 22 mag, 21 inch barrel, stainless steel, five round magazine. It's equipped with a three by nine scope. There's another version of that in 17 HMR, 93 R17. It's like GXP or something like that. 21 inch barrel also in blue. That has a three by nine scope equipped from the factory. You got the BSEV, B-S-E-V thumb hole variation. And then you have the minimalist, which I'm showing you here and a whole bunch of other ones as well that will come and go through the years. And let me show you my variation. This is again uh, called currently the 93 R17 BVSS. And I think it's going to be very similar to this one. And I don't think this variation has a threaded barrel. On we go to features. Would you need that? Would you want that? I would say yes. Uh, with what I know now and how I shoot these rifles, I would like that option. Now in the inset video, when you see me testing the minimalist, I don't have a can on it. Obviously, I don't have one here because I've never threaded it, but it'd be nice to have that option. If you had to make a very quiet shot, even though these are supersonic cartridges, yes, I would like to have a threaded barrel. And it's, it's pretty much uncompetitive now in today's market to have an unthreaded bolt action rifle. I don't care what it is. Even if it's a hunting rifle, you should thread it. Why? It's just a competitive option. Guys can put a can on it if they want to. Even if it's a deer rifle, I would like to have a threading on it if I could. Um, shooting quietly is shooting considerately. You know, you're just being considerate of other people. Okay, so this barrel right here is uh, portly. This is a heavy barrel on this variation, 17 HMR again. So that's a really heavy barrel for such a tiny diameter bullet, don't you think? Do you really need that with a 17 HMR or even a 22 mag? Um, I would say absolutely not, but it's just kind of a group think that we have in rimfire bolt action rifles, which are focused towards accuracy. 
And the reason I say you don't need it is because I have a CZ 452 and 22 long rifle and that shoots inch groups with a sporter contoured barrel. As long as it's rifled correctly and has good steel, that barrel is going to shoot. And you're really not going to be sailing a bunch of rounds through a bolt action rifle, right? But this is the current norm of the industry. They feel like if you put a T designation on it, a target designation, then it's going to have a bull barrel. Here it is. It's big, thick. It adds weight. Roughly seven pounds naked with a mag in it, a five round mag for this version, the BBSS. Non-threaded barrel, of course. Target crown here, free floated. And then we go to that beautiful, lovely, gray laminated wood stock, which adds weight. Remember, as I've talked about forever, if you get laminated wood, it's gonna add weight. Sometimes that weight is good. If you're resting it from the bench, you're on a bipod shooting prairie dogs, weight's not a bad thing to a point, right? It settles the gun down allows you to connect more readily. Uh, check it up here in this variation. Full pistol grip, nice Monte Carlo stock. Really nice, I love this one. Uh, not a rubber butt pad, it's a plastic butt, butt pad on this Savage 93 and 17 HMR. But I love the stock. I'm a big fan of conventional stocks. And of course we've got uh, sling attachment points here in the back, in the front. And then we go to the top of the receiver. This is old fashioned right here, boys and girls, that you do not have a Picatinny rail attached. Uh, when did I buy this gun? I would say probably around 2006. Uh, and as you can see, I had to put scope bases on there, attach them, lock tight them, source the appropriate uh, rings. As you can see, I mount my scopes very low. Look at that, dudes. It's like awesome clearance. That's like I don't know, a note card. That's all you can fit there. Note card right there. I always like my scopes very low. Yeah, so, but I'm saying it's old fashioned because it should have a pick rail. And again, we're gonna see a competitive option that gets that right. Keep that in mind. Decent bolt knob. Uh, I wouldn't say it's like industry leading, but it clears the scope bell easily. Smooth action usually in these guns. I think the min minimalist wasn't so much. This one, my gun in stainless steel, pretty smooth action. You can tell when it's cocked because you'll see this portion here extended. I'm going to pull the trigger, safe direction, push that safety forward, and then you can see it's uncocked. Speaking of the safety, I love its location. Easy. Swipe it off with a thumb. This is oriented to right-hand shooters. This model, I think they make it a left-handed model. I think they do. Here's the bottom where your magazine goes. We have a plastic, molded plastic trigger guard. I don't care about that, I never have. Then we have a uh, bottom metal, which is metal. And then we come to the magazine. This is the one that came with this gun. Here comes a rant. These magazines are out of date, Savage. In fact, the whole gun needs to be redesigned. That's right, I said it. No one else is saying it, I'll say it right now. These magazines are out of date. Are they awful? Uh, I don't know if they're awful, but they're damn close to being awful. One reason I say is because they are more difficult than the competitors' guns to insert and extract the magazine. Now, when you watch this, you're going, well, I don't see a problem. And I have a 93 and I never have a problem. Well, for me, uh, shooting, uh, I wouldn't say it's a problem. It's just not as smooth as the competition. So right here on this one, I can pull and the magazine comes out, but it has a groove that has to mate on this steel guide piece right here. See that? Big deal? I wouldn't say it's a big deal really, but what we're talking about is improving a product. And that's kind of what I do here. I call out stuff that I just don't like and I think it can be improved. I think the magazine is antiquated and it needs a different magazine system. One, it's single, uh, it's single stack. Uh, they should have a completely different new polymer magazine with at least 10 rounds. And here we go. I got to talk about this now because this is going to get kind of jumping ahead of how it shot. You're going to see the in the video, if you haven't seen it already, lots of problems that I had with the magazine, especially with this minimalist. The gun was very hard to cycle and I think it was magazine related. It just did not want to feed. One reason I ha I've taken so long in this review, I've had these checked out from Gunnies for almost a year, is because I went out and bought different mags. 
And I was like, well, let me put different magazines in it. Maybe it's just one magazine. It didn't help. It was still difficult to cycle, strip off. Sometimes it wouldn't uh, eject. It was just, it was actually horrible. I almost just discontinued the test and said, forget it. I'm just going to get in front of the camera and say it's a non-recommend. This is a 10 rounder with this minimalist model 93. It has the same tongue and groove system here. Same, uh, I'm sorry, it's a ridiculous magazine release. I don't like this mag release. And I can't remember if I said that in FBSR review. I, if not, I should have. And it has the same style of magazine. And if you remember, it's, it's kind of a banana magazine though in that 22 long rifle version. And the walls on that magazine came apart during shooting and I had to go buy new mags. So this, the magazines on the 93, I think are just, they're just garbage. Uh, it doesn't mean that yours is having problems. You probably have a 93 and say, oh, well, mine feeds fine, but it, we can do so much better. Here's the worst part. So I was like, okay, so I got this 10 round magazine. Let me just put it in my old stainless steel 17 HMR. And then, you know, I've been waiting forever. I, you know, I've been distracted for a 10 round magazine for this. Let me just put this in here. Yeah, I'll have a 10 round magazine. Here's, here's the dealio on that. The problem is, is that it's not compatible with this older gun. So here I've put it in. <laughs> that was son of a bitch will come out. <laughs> there it is. Oh my goodness. I call Savage up and I just, I'm just a regular customer. I was like, hey, what's up with your magazines, man? I have an older 93 and 17 HMR and the new 10 rounders don't work with it. Is that, am I seeing that right? Or am I doing something wrong? Is there any modification I can make? he goes, you're correct. They are not compatible. Good hell. And I go, really? Why? Why? I think it's a bolt variation. So there's a bolt. Good hell. <laughs> oh my gosh. I cannot get this magazine out. Ah, there it is. I'm not making any of this up, by the way. So they made some change to the receiver, to the bolt, to the magazine well, where this newer 10 round magazine doesn't work in the older guns. Now, as a former owner of this gun, it, it, it truly uh, irritated me. I'm like, are you kidding me? So there's no way I can get a 10 round magazine for my older model 93 and 17 HMR. And the answer from him was, that's correct. You're stuck with five round mags, but wait, I'm not done ranting. So even with this five round mag, as I went out and shot my Savage 93 and 17 HMR, you'll see the footage. I had magazine problems with these. So they were dropping. So I would insert them all the way, click, I'd shoot, and then I'd pull the trigger, nothing happens. The magazine had dropped. Why? Well, I, who knows why? I mean, the spring on this was adequately tensioned. It would snap into place. Again, this is why I say this is just an antiquated system. I just don't like it. I don't like it. And I'll tell you this right now. I don't like it so much that after having gone back and shot this rifle, I'm selling this gun. It will be at Gunny's, a great American gun store. You guys can go buy it if you want. I'll sign it for you if you want. Yeah, I just, I mean, it will work, but it's just irritating against the current competition. And uh, stuck with five rounds, no thank you. No thank you. The competition will have a 15 round magazine that works perfectly. Unbelievable. So I'm amazed at the gun industry, how it sticks with status quo. A lot of reviewers do that. They go, well, that's just the way it is. Well, is it? Um, the reliability problems, I think, were related to the magazine in this gun, and they were numerous and legion. Again, to the point where I just want to throw the gun in a lake somewhere and just forget reviewing it. That's how bad it got. Let's review this uh, stock real quick. It looks very interesting. It looks cool. I mentioned that. It's got cool laser stippling here. It's got an interesting forend swivel studs right here sporter contour it is threaded for your suppressor again i didn't run one half by 28 is a threading uh savage has really good rifling we will look at the accuracy however and uh same cocking bolt in the back here you can see the thing about the the stock i didn't like is i didn't really think it was comfortable at least sh shooting from the bench and it was having so many problems, I didn't really want to do anything more than that. I didn't want to play like mini sniper with this gun. And that was really planned for this review. But both guns were not reliable enough for me to do that. So I just kinked it.
just kinked it. And I was like, I don't, I'm not gonna do it. I'll just do some bench shooting, some infield shooting, call it good. So um, same safety as before. The Accu Trigger is phenomenal. I've always loved the Accu Trigger. I've said that over and over again, and everybody copies it. Ruger copies it. The Accu Trigger. Um, the the mechanism itself is I'm talking about the bolt mechanism is completely adequate from my shooting as far as I can tell. It's rear locking, cock on opening, dual extractors, and fixed blade ejector in the Savage 93 rimfire rifle, same as before. And that's features down and dirty. How did it shoot? Uh, I kind of jumped the gun and told you. Lots of reliability problems related mostly to the magazine, I suspect. It wasn't ammunition related. I used three different brands of ammo. Still happened. Magazine dropping. Uh, very difficult to load. Very difficult to unload. And I was astonished, really. Here's the accuracy. I want to show you the minimalist first in 22 Magnum. So, you know, I said bad mag. I, I thought it was a magazine at first. Well, I bought others. Uh, this one went out on the KTM 690. And you, you may see it in the background shooting. I love the trigger, like I said. And that's good accuracy. I'm not saying it's phenomenal. There's 100 yards. Uh, that's really good accuracy. That's good. That's really good. Got an up arrow, and that's good. Um, almost MOA in some of those groups. But could I do better? with that particular gun, which has a shorter barrel? Probably. Here's my version of 17 HMR, stainless steel. I said 2003, I purchased it. I don't think that's right. I think it's more like 2006. I was just guessing in the desert. Here you go, 100 yards, 10 shots right here. This is good. Shooting Hornady, that's good, good. I said accurate triggers, up arrow, up arrow. Uh, I had a bad table, so I knocked off half an MOA for that. So I would say it's easily sub MOA and 17 HMR. That's another reason I love that cartridge. It's just super accurate. Magazine dropped, hard to get out. See, I in field note, 107 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a sighting group. Good, good. I'd call this easily, I wouldn't say easily, but sub MOA accurate in this variation of the 93. I do remember in shooting though, the hits, I shouldn't say the hits, but that grouping did not come easily. I had to work really, really hard. Pull the trigger very softly, maintain stability because there was another paper where my grips weren't that good. Uh, my overall take on the accuracy overall of the 93 is excellent. In 17 HMR, probably outstanding. But the other problems sink it for me. So much so that I would not recommend you go out and purchase a 93 in these calibers. I think in 22s, they're better. They have a different magazine. Uh, and again, you'll see comments below where guys didn't have problems with them, but I just bring data that I have. Myself, as a consumer of these products, I don't want them in my inventory. I'm going to get rid of mine. I'm selling that some bitch. It's gone. It pissed me off. And once the gun pisses me off, it's gone. Competitive offerings. And I've been mentioning this. This is what I'm talking about. So this is an updated competitive offering, cast member, and it's mind blowing actually. Dang, I don't have it's magazine, but I'll talk about it. Here comes a Ruger American, previously reviewed, and I reviewed that one in 22 Magnum. This one is in 17 HMR. This is a target variation. Look at this. Look at this, Picatinny rail included, included. I told you, uh, you know, Ruger copies everybody, right? You know, like St. Louis Ranger, one of my donors says, they are the weird Al Yankovic of the industry. They just take a song and make it weirder and more different. <laughs> and sometimes it's better, though. I think this is a really good gun, a really good product. So it's basically an AccuTrigger. And look at that bolt knob. 60-degree throw, extended, very tactical-looking, free-floated. Again, we see the heavy barrel formula. They're still doing it, and it's threaded. This one is in blue, of course, and it has that beautiful gray laminate. And then they include a rubber butt pad. Now, the magazine is a nine rounder. It's compatible with uh, 22 Magnum, 17 HMR, same mag. And did you notice that, how easy that is to drop? So I just pull, push 
the paddle and it pops right out. So there's no groove that I have to fool around with. I label it so, you know, someone who doesn't know the magazine notes that it's not a 1022 mag. This is a magazine and it takes 15 round BX-15s. How awesome is that? From Ruger. So it's a Ruger factory mag and I thought I had that magazine here, but I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, I would say this is a much more preferred competitive option. I'd much rather run this gun rather than a 93 and 17 or 22 mag with their current formats. Yeah, the magazine system's better. The trigger's gonna be the same. The bolt knob's a little bit different. Uh, the smoothness is there. And I wouldn't say it's like superior to the 93. It's just mainly the magazine and the pick rail that I like. That's an option. Also, you might look at the CZ457 does come in a combo with a 22 barrel and a 17 HMR barrel. Uh, I have a 452 and they keep just up uh, upgrading and changing that whole gun. It goes 453, 455, now 457. You might look at that. And I think Browning T-Bolt has some 17 HMRs and watch my Browning T-Bolt review. Uh, I love that gun. The Browning T-Bolt is amazing. But uh, I think the lead in the pack is that Ruger American with a 15 round magazine that you can get a BX-15. It's a no brainer. So, uh, philosophy of use, again, mini sniper rifle, but uh, so many smoothness and reliability problems with these two particular guns, uh, it's still a no recommend. Uh, they really need to go back and just change that magazine. I think, I think the, the bolt knob, the bolt are fine. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this minimalist stock. Maybe you are. It looks cool, but it's not very ergonomic and it's not very lightweight either. Uh, I'd pitch that. Um, Change the magazine. They just need a new magazine to upgrade this. And they just call it a Gen 2 93. Polymer mag, 10 rounds, and allow your user to have 15 or 20 rounds uh, additional mags if they get it. There you go. Done with review. Thank you so much for uh, sticking with me through the gun reviews, knife reviews, watch reviews. It is a diesel rasp NHM today in the bunker. Multi-tool reviews, flashlight reviews, everything. Philosophy videos. Again, be a long-term donor. It motivates me, pays the bills for all this testing and review. Nothing fancy. See ya. Thank you.